Hello everybody, my name is Joshua Karasek. I'm a winemaking specialist with Anardis USA. And in this short video, I'm gonna show you how to stabilize your wine for tartrates with Zenith Uno. So in this video, we're gonna talk about why we would wanna use Zenith instead of chilling. What is Zenith? Which Zenith product do you wanna use depending on the kind of wine you're making? A timeline for Zenith preparations, how to prepare wines for Zenith use, and finally applying Zenith. So why we want to consider using Zenith for tartrate stability instead of the standard chilling process that's been used traditionally? Well, there's improvements in quality uh, with respect to preservation of natural acidity and preservation of freshness. And those are both um, very important attributes for white and rosé wines. Uh, when you use Zenith, you don't lose freshness and you don't lose natural acidity as you do with the traditional uh, cold stabilization through chilling. Sustainability is another aspect to consider. As an industry, we need to make sure that our processes are as sustainable as possible. And with chilling, you require quite a lot of energy to lower the temperature of the wine. And there's also a water footprint that comes along with cleaning the tank after you've uh, tartrate stabilized it, as well as chemicals and detergents required for cleaning the tank after you've precipitated the tartrates. From a cost perspective, Zenith is also the winner. So Zenith is uh, more cost effective than chilling. With chilling, you have labor associated with cleaning the tanks after racking, wine losses associated with the racking after tartrate stabilization, uh, other inputs such as cream of tartar uh, for chilling. Uh, so uh, when you break down the cost between Zenith and chilling, uh, Zenith is the winner. In terms of effectiveness, uh, Zenith works on wines that are very unstable, up to 30% change in conductivity. Uh, additionally, the long lasting effect of Zenith, we have uh, some wines that have been treated as long as five years ago that are still uh, tartrate stable. Uh, basically, once Zenith was developed, we began testing the longevity of the product. And after five years, we still have uh, wines that are tartrate stable. We've also seen Zenith work under very um, rough conditions in terms of subjecting the wines to very low, uh, low temperatures for very extended periods of time. And those wines uh, also were stable with the use of Zenith. In terms of ease of use, Zenith is an extremely easy to use product. It's simply added just before bottling and uh, I'll go over some of the details of how to use that as well. So what is Zenith? Zenith is a revolutionary line of wine stabilizers based off the molecule potassium polyaspartate, also known as KPA. So KPA is a patented and TTB approved molecule that was developed for tartrate stabilization by an artist. And uh, KPA is basically a polyamino acid of aspartic acid. Uh, aspartic acid is an amino acid which is found naturally occurring in grapes and other parts of nature. And so uh, it's a polyamino acid, so it's a long chain of aspartic acid. Uh, and KPA works by binding potassium and preventing potassium by tartrate formation. So instead of with traditional chilling where you remove the tartrates through subjecting the wine to low temperatures, KPA actually prevents the precipitation of the tartrates from occurring in the first place. So which Zenith do you want to use? Um, so we have three different versions of Zenith available in the US. There's Zenith Uno, Zenith Color, and Zenith Perlage. Zenith Uno is going to be used mainly for whites and rosé wines. It's a 10% solution of KPA with SO2. Zenith Color is used primarily for red wines. And the difference between Zenith Uno and Zenith Color is that Zenith Color has a filterable gum arabic, Varic, for color stability. So that's used for red wines that are tartrate and color unstable. And then Zenith Perlage is used primarily for sparkling wines. That's a solution of KPA with a little bit of manoproteins. Uh, the reason why the manoproteins are included in that blend is for mouthfeel improvement, as well as improvement in uh, foamability. So you have better foam and better mouthfeel with the use of the Zenith Perlage. For this video, I'm gonna primarily focus on Zenith Uno. If you wanna learn more about application of Zenith Color, uh, you can click in the description of this uh, video. We have a link to or another video on stabilizing red wines with the Zenith color. So here are the criteria for using Zenith Uno. It's pretty simple. You need to have a protein stable wine and I'll talk about how to do protein stability specifically for Zenith. Also, you wanna make sure that wine doesn't have any lysozyme in it. So if you've treated the wine with lysozyme or if you're going to treat the wine with lysozyme, you need to be aware of uh, there's a negative interaction between uh, lysozyme and Zenith. So you wanna make sure that there's no lysozyme in the wine when you're adding Zenith. Additionally, you want to make sure your wine is low turbidity before you add it. So we recommend adding Zenith after you have done your uh, major 
filtration, so after cross flow or after pad filtration, just prior to bottling is when you apply the Zenith. So here is the uh, sort of ideal timeline for stabilization um, prior to bottling. About six to eight weeks from your bottle date, uh, you want to do all your blending, acid adjustments, fining, clarification, any big modifications to the wine um, with respect to uh, changes in the wine matrix itself. You want to get all those done early um, before you actually start doing your testing for Zenith. About four to six weeks out, you're going to do your protein finding trials for Zenith. And when I'm saying protein finding trials, this is essentially like a bentonite finding trial, a modified bentonite finding trial for Zenith specifically. So if, if you're doing bentonite finding trials already, this is really not so different. It just basically is um, includes the Zenith in those trials. And then you'll do your actual protein finding additions at that point. And when I'm saying protein finding additions, I'm not talking about actual protein derived finding agents. I'm actually talking about protein removal finding agents. Uh, so bentonite is one example, uh, or Clarel ZW. Uh, Clarel ZW is a is a basically a finding blend specifically for Zenith, and I'll talk about that in a couple of minutes. Three to four weeks out is when you're doing your tartrate testing um, and you're ordering your Zenith. So your tartrate testing is basically confirming the dosage of Zenith as stabilizing uh, your wine in particular. Um, so while we recommend 100 mL per hectoliter for um, you know, for a standard dosage because it stabilizes most wines. We understand that winemakers also will probably want to test different dosages of Zenith Uno. And so this is your opportunity to do that. One week before bottling is when you'll typically do your cross flow filtration. Um, about one to two days before bottling is when you're adding your Zenith. You can actually add it, you know, just hours before you uh, bottle. But typically a day or, or two days before is when winemakers will add it just after filtration, before bottling is basically when the Zenith gets added. So now I will go through how to do protein checks for Zenith Uno use. Uh, so it's again, very similar to bentonite finding trials uh, in that we're testing the wine and seeing if there's any unstable proteins in the wine. The only difference here is that we are basically uh, including the Zenith Uno in those bentonite finding trials. So the first step is to choose your finding agent that you want to use. So typically winemakers will use bentonite. We recommend using Clairol ZW, which is essentially a finding blend that was created specifically for preparing wines for Zenith use. And so it's a finding blend that includes uh, sodium bentonite, uh, plant-based protein, and pre-activated chitosan. So uh, the sodium bentonite removes unstable proteins. The plant protein removes uh, basically uh, small monomeric phenolics that can increase protein instability. And then the preactivated chitosan acts like a charge booster to increase uh, the activity of those other two finding agents. And so the Clairol ZW was developed specifically to lower the dosage of bentonite required to stabilize wines for heat stability. And when we compare bentonite to Clairol ZW with respect to the amount of uh, finding agent required for protein stability, um, Clairol ZW is uh, oftentimes the winner. In the case of these 12 wines that we tested, the Clairol ZW was the, um, was the better finding agent in all those cases for protein stabilizing those wines. So we recommend using the Clairol ZW for, um, you know, for preparing wines for, for Zenith use. So now I'm going to detail how to do protein finding trials for Zenith Uno use. Um, there's a lot of detail in this process, so this is really intended to show you how to do the, the protein finding trials. So bear with me while I go through the details of this. But essentially, if you start with 750 milliliters of your sample, so you obtain 750 milliliters first, you're going to take uh, that wine and you're going to dose it with varying amounts of your finding agent, so Clairol ZW or Bentonite. Um, so we recommend starting from zero to 50 grams per hectoliter to begin. So you'll do 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, and 50 um, grams per hectoliter. And after you've dosed those bottles, you invert them a couple of times. We usually recommend inverting them all the same amount, so like three times. So you do three inversions with the, with the dosed product in it. And then those bottles go into the refrigerator for overnight, so about 16 hours basically, until they've completely settled. And then you'll take the, sampled, the samples out of the refrigerator that have settled. You will filter those samples through a 0.45 micron filter into some uh, turbidity tubes. So these are 
little glass tubes that you use for turbidity measurements. Uh, those tubes are also need to be um, rated for higher temperatures because you're going to use those tubes in, in, um, in a water bath. So after you've filtered the samples into the tubes, uh, you're going to dose those tubes with 100 milliliters per hectoliter. You know, so you dose everything with 100 mils per hectoliter of Zenith Uno. So up until this point, you have basically a bentonite finding trial. And then at this point, you're including Zenith in that bentonite finding trial uh, for protein stability. Then you're going to measure turbidity at this point. So um, you've added the Zenith, you've mixed it up, and you measure turbidity. So that's T1. Those samples then go into a hot water bath, ADC for two hours. After two hours, you take them out of the water bath and let them cool to room temperature for three hours. So after they've cooled or after the three hour uh, time point has passed, you'll measure the turbidity again. So that's T2. So you'll take the second turbidity measurement, T2, and subtract the first turbidity measurement. And if it's less than two, then that dosage uh, is basically protein stable for use with Zenith. So you're going to pick the lowest dosage of, um, of finding agent to achieve that parameter of, of less than two NTUs uh, change in turbidity. So if you, let's say you have um, 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, and 50 grams per hectoliter, if 30 through 50 grams per hectoliter are all stable, you would pick 30 grams per hectoliter as your, as your dosage because it's the least finding agent that you have to add. If you're doing this testing with sparkling wines, we recommend increasing the alcohol by 1.5% before doing testing. And that'll ensure that after your wine goes through secondary fermentation and you've increased the alcohol, uh, that you've basically stabilized the wine for that situation. So after you've gone through and picked the dosage that's appropriate for uh, your wine and you've actually added it to the wine itself and allowed that uh, finding agent to settle, that usually requires about two to three days, depending on the tank size. After that finding agent has settled and, you're, and, you, and the wine has been fined, what you'll do is you'll pull a sample from that tank and immediately go through uh, the filtration. So you'll filter the wine through a 0.45 micron filter, add the Zenith, and then go through the heating um, and turbidity measurements after that point. So you'll just recheck the wine to make sure that it's stable after you've made your, um, your finding addition. So after you've rechecked it, and if you find that it's stable, then you go ahead and proceed with the next part of the um, preparations for Zenith. So that's the sort of protein finding trials for Zenith Uno use. It's essentially a modified bentonite finding trial. You, If you're working in a wine lab, you do probably do these all the time. This is just a slight modification of that testing. So here's a timeline for stabilization. Um, we've gone through the first step, which is the protein finding trials for Zenith. Now about three to four weeks out, we wanna do tartrate testing. So just to confirm that the wine is uh, ready for use with uh, Zenith. So now I'll quickly go over how to do tartrate checks for Zenith Uno. So conductivity testing is one way that you can use to check tartrate stability with Zenith Uno. And that involves an untreated and a Zenith Uno treated sample. And you'll compare the difference between these two different samples. So if you subject these two samples to a conductivity test, um, you can use a check stab device or a tartar check device or just a manual conductivity measurement with a probe and, um, and using uh, glycol chilling. If you have a check stab or a tartar check device, these measurements are very easy and very accurate. Uh, manual uh, measurements are typically a little less accurate and a little bit more time intensive. So if you're a medium or large size winery that's doing a lot of these conductivity measurements, we highly recommend investing in a check stab or a tartar check device um, to do those measurements. If you are a small or medium sized wine, winery and you're looking to do these uh, tartrate checks for Zenith Uno, recommend reaching out to your local wine lab and asking them for a Zenith panel. Uh, if you don't know whether your wine lab offers this analysis, we can, um, you can reach out to us and we have a list of wine labs that offer uh, Zenith panels. And so we can refer you to the, to the nearest wine lab that has a Zenith um, offers this kind of testing for your wines. But basically when you compare a control and a Zenith Uno uh, treated sample, what you're looking for is uh, for stability, if a wine has less than 3% change in micro Siemens per centimeter squared, or less 3% change in conductivity, then, uh, then the wine is considered stable. So typically you'll compare a control versus a, a Zenith Uno treated and whichever uh, dosage uh, basically meets this criteria, less than 3% change in uh, conductivity, 
is what we would consider to be stable. Another way to do this testing is with cold hold. Uh, so cold hold testing is, is a, basically a test that's been around for a while now. And the way that you do it is you filter 200 mils of sample and parse that two, uh, 200 mils into two separate graduated conical flasks. These are specialized flasks that basically have graduations of, um, you know, measured graduations on the side of them. And uh, they can be basically um, put inside of a very uh, cold refrigerator, negative 4C refrigerator. That's colder than most refrigerators go. So uh, if you don't have this kind of refrigerator, uh, you might rely on uh, using connectivity measurements or um, you know, submitting the wine to a wine lab. But if you do have a refrigerator that can get this cold, then, um, then a cold hold test is a really good way to do it. And so you, you basically you treat one uh, flask uh, with the Zenith Uno and the other flask is untreated and you subject it to negative 4C for six days. And uh, basically you observe for any crystal formation in those uh, flasks after the six days. And so uh, typically what you'll see with the Zenith Uno is that you'll have no tartrates formed in the flask. And so this can be an analysis to check different dosages of Zenith Uno or just to confirm 100 mils per hectoliter is going to stabilize your wine. And so these are two different measurements that you can use to tartrate check for uh, Zenith Uno use, and uh, they both work really great. The connectivity is a little bit faster. Cold old testing takes a little bit longer and needs some specialized equipment, um, but either of them are, are uh, great tests for, uh, for testing tartrate stability. So now we're going back to our timeline for stabilization. We have uh, protein find our wine. Um, we've re removed any unstable protein. We've tartrate tested and found the dosage that's appropriate for, um, for treating our wine for tartrate stability. We've ordered our Zenith. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to filter or cross flow uh, filter or pad filter our wine to below uh, two NTUs. And then we're going to simply make our uh, Zenith edition just prior to bottling. And uh, I'll go ahead and detail how to do the uh, Zenith edition for you. Zenith editions are very simple. You basically, it's in a liquid form and it gets added directly to the tank and mixed into the tank. And then you're ready to go and you're ready to bottle after that point. So pretty simple once you get through uh, all of the testing and make sure that your wine is ready for Zenith use. It simply gets added into the tank or you can add it with a Venturi into the, into the tank. Uh, as well as it's, as long as it's homogenous and mixed into the actual tank itself, then, uh, then you're basically ready for bottling. So that's all for um, preparing wines and applying Zenith to uh, wines for tartrate stabilization. Um, thank you so much for watching this video. If you want to find more information on winemaking, you can subscribe to our channel and um, we have lots of videos uh, on winemaking there. Uh, if you have any more questions, feel free to reach out to our, um, you know, to your local Anardis branch and uh, contact the technical line for, for more information. Or you can visit our website uh, to find more information there. Again, there's uh, an additional video for stabilizing red wines with Zenith Color that you can check out that's in the description of this video. Or you can also uh, uh, see the attached PDF link for our um, stabilizing wines with Zenith Uno uh, or preparing wines for Zenith Uno uh, document. So thank you so much for watching and uh, have a great day.